In the vast realm of television, there exists a moment, a seminal spark that ignites a lifelong connection with a series. Picture yourself in the quiet embrace of the late 80 seconds, a time of sitcom revolution, as you stumbled upon the now iconic Seinfeld. Do you recall that initial flicker of curiosity, the curious tipping point that drew you into the quirky world of Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer? Perhaps it was the way they navigated the hilariously mundane, painting life's ordinary canvas with strokes of absurdity. Ah, the memories that have become etched in the tapestry of our pop culture consciousness. That episode where Kramer's wild entrances transformed doorways into portals of comedy, leaving us perpetually eager to see what antic would come bounding next. And who could forget George's timeless struggles, each mishap akin to a cautionary tale about how not to navigate the labyrinth of social norms. Elaine's dance moves, a rhythmic embodiment of embarrassment we all secretly resonated with. And of course, Jerry's observational wit that spun life's trivialities into comedy gold. Now, as we gather the strands of nostalgia and embark on a journey through the lesser known, curious corners of Seinfeld, prepare to unearth some surprising truths. Did you know that the show's creator, Larry David, actually voiced the infamous Steinbrenner? Or that the show's signature bass line theme was created by the one and only Jerry Seinfeld himself? These are just the first drops of the fountain of facts that await, each revealing a new layer to the tapestry we thought we knew. So, dear reader, fasten your seatbelt for a ride through the untrodden alleys of Seinfeld lore as we unveil the concealed gems that make this series an everlasting beacon of humor. Get ready to relive those laugh-out-loud moments, to reconnect with the characters who feel like old friends, and to discover the hidden anecdotes that have woven themselves into the show's legacy. Buckle up, for the journey begins anew. And now, let's dive into the labyrinth of random facts, where truth is often stranger than sitcom fiction. Sitcom fiction. Sitcom Seinfeld, a popular American TV series that aired from 1989 to 1998, was created by comedian Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. The show revolved around the mundane yet hilarious lives of a group of friends in New York City. Its iconic characters included Jerry Seinfeld, a stand-up comedian often observing life's quirks, George Costanza, Jerry's neurotic and bumbling best friend, Elaine Benes, Jerry's ex-girlfriend and friend with a unique sense of humor, and Cosmo Kramer, Jerry's eccentric neighbor known for his wild antics. The show's unique style lay in its show-about-nothing concept, where ordinary situations were explored with comedic brilliance. The characters' discussions ranged from trivial matters to complex social observations, capturing the essence of everyday life. The series introduced catchphrases like yada yada and concepts like double dipping that became part of the cultural lexicon. Seinfeld left an indelible impact on popular culture. It popularized the use of observational comedy on television, influencing later sitcoms. The show's finale in 1998 drew massive viewership and remains one of the most watched TV events. The legacy endures through syndication and streaming platforms, introducing new generations to its humor. Random facts about the show, the character Newman was named after Wayne Knight's real-life neighbor. The series was initially titled The Seinfeld Chronicles. Jerry Seinfeld turned down an offer of $5 million per episode to continue the show. The show's fictional Monk's Cafe exterior was inspired by Tom's Restaurant in NYC. Jason Alexander based George Costanza on Woody Allen. On Woody Allen. On Kramer's name dance, unraveling Seinfeld's early quirks in the inaugural episode of the iconic 1989 TV series Seinfeld. Titled Good News, Bad News, keen-eyed viewers might have caught a peculiar vocal tick. As the enigmatic Kramer made his entrance, Jerry Seinfeld nonchalantly uttered Kessler instead of the now familiar Kramer. This verbal anomaly wasn't an oversight, but rather an artifact of a backstage saga that unfolded before the show's premiere. Behind the scenes, Kenny Kramer, a real-life neighbor of Jerry Seinfeld, had a distinctive demand. His surname, Kramer, couldn't grace the show's credits unless he was granted the privilege of portraying the eccentric neighbor. This stipulation set off a chain reaction that saw Jerry Seinfeld temporarily default to Kessler in the script. Negotiations eventually swayed in Kenny Kramer's favor. His audacious list of demands found acceptance, marking the genesis of the Kramer we all know. The character's name was retained, propelling Michael Richards into sitcom stardom. It's a chapter in Seinfeld's history that showcases the intricate negotiations 
and the birth of one of television's most cherished characters. The show's quirky inception, embodied in this nomenclature dance, mirrors the very essence of the series an amalgamation of eccentricity and everyday humor all woven together in the canvas of 1990s New York. So, next time you catch a rerun of Seinfeld, remember that every Kramer uttered is a nod to a peculiar origin tale. A tale where Kessler became Kramer and a neighbor's audacity left an indelible mark on television history. 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 Kramer's centennial entrance, a milestone on Seinfeld in the iconic 1989 TV series Seinfeld. Michael Richards' portrayal of Cosmo Kramer was a wellspring of memorable moments. Among them, his exclamation of him out of the contest stands out. Interestingly, this pivotal moment coincided with a significant milestone in the show's historied scene marked Kramer's 100th entrance into Jerry's apartment. As a character known for his eccentricity and unpredictability, Kramer's entrances were always eagerly anticipated by the show's fans. His physical comedy and unorthodox behavior created a unique dynamic with Jerry and the rest of the cast. A 100th entrance, marked by the declaration from Kramer himself, added an extra layer of intrigue to his ongoing antics. Seinfeld, co-created by Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld, became a cultural touchstone, blending observational humor with the everyday trials and tribulations of its New York City characters. Speaking of Larry David, his influence on the show extended beyond co-creation and production. He lent his voice to various characters, including the distinctive portrayal of George M. Steinbrenner III, the fictionalized owner of the New York Yankees. David's vocal talents extended to roles like the man in the cape, a newsstand owner, and the individual ordering a kosher meal. Notably, Larry David's vocal presence persisted until the very end of the series. In the closing moments of the ninth season's 22nd episode, aptly titled The Finale, David voiced the lines of a prisoner exclaiming, I'm gonna cut you. This unexpected, yet fitting, conclusion showcased David's enduring connection to the show and his ability to infuse his comedic sensibilities in various forms. While Seinfeld featured an ensemble cast, certain characters remained elusive despite their recurrent mentions. One such character was Bob Sacamano, a close friend of Kramer's. Throughout the series, Kramer regaled his friends with bizarre anecdotes involving Bob, yet the character never made a physical appearance on screen. This narrative choice added an intriguing layer of mystery and absurdity to Kramer's stories, further exemplifying the show's penchant for unique comedic angles. Seinfeld continues to be celebrated for its enduring humor and portrayal of the minutiae of urban life. From Kramer's entrances to Larry David's multifaceted involvement and the enigmatic Bob Sacamano, the show's legacy endures as a masterclass in television comedy. Seinfeld, the unconventional rise to television royalty in the bustling stand-up comedy scene of 1970s New York. Two names emerged, destined to rewrite television history. Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld, a dynamic duo of comedic brilliance, honed their craft on the city's club circuit. Their partnership was a precursor to the legendary series Seinfeld, which would soon become a cultural touchstone. David's journey led him to ABC's Fridays in 1980 a Saturday Night Live counterpart where he collaborated alongside Michael Richards. As the mid-1980s dawned, David secured a writing spot on SNL, introducing him to Julia Louis-Dreyfus. A twist of fate kept him unacquainted with one eventual Seinfeld regular, Jason Alexander. But the show's magnetism was undeniable. Debuting in 1989, Seinfeld quickly embedded itself in the public psyche. An unparalleled quirkiness infused each episode, but there was a linguistic oddity to almost every episode title began with the definitive article. The exception, however, stood as a testament to the show's penchant for surprise. The pilot, good news, bad news, defied the norm. The show's reign was unprecedented. A triumphant final network season secured its spot as one of just three series in American history to claim the top ratings slot throughout its concluding year. The echelons of television history welcomed Seinfeld alongside I Love Lucy and The Andy Griffith Show. Through happenstance and collaboration, Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld etched their names into entertainment lore. Seinfeld wasn't merely a show, it was a slice of life, a contemplation of nothingness that resonated deeply. As the curtain fell, it left an indelible mark, 
proving that the ordinary, when viewed through the right lens, could be truly extraordinary. Elaine Benes, a fusion of inspiration for Seinfeld's iconic character Elaine Benes, the indelible character from the beloved 1989 TV series Seinfeld, had a tapestry of inspirations woven into her creation. A symphony of real-life connections, the character drew from the personas of Carol Lafer, Susan McNabb, and Monica Yates. Lafer, a close friend of Jerry Seinfeld S. and a former flame, offered some of her essence to the character. However, the essence wasn't singular. Susan McNabb, Seinfeld S. enduring girlfriend, contributed to the character's foundation. And let's not forget Monica Yates, a name entwined with Larry David's history who also lent hues to Elaine's colorful demeanor. But beyond personal connections, Elaine's canvas expanded to include the vivacity of model Susan McNabb and the spirited aura of Monica Yates. The result, a character that echoed with authenticity, resonating not only through the quirky corridors of Seinfeld's universe, but also within the dimensions of real-life friendships and relationships. The ensemble's chemistry was electric, leaving viewers in stitches. Yet, the show's producers harbored a whispered concern, Jerry's acting. A recurring jest in the series was Jerry's inability to act. A cosmic wink, perhaps, to the realm of reality where Seinfeld's acting prowess wasn't the spotlight. This subtle narrative thread called for a counterbalance. Enter Jason Alexander. Drawing from his Broadway roots, Alexander brought thespian weight to the show, becoming the cornerstone of the ensemble. His embodiment of George Costanza became a touchstone of Seinfeld's brilliance, compensating for the titular character's acting deficiency. And speaking of thespian subterfuge, Jason Alexander, in a twist of fate, didn't don eyeglasses off-screen. The glasses that became synonymous with George Costanza's persona were, indeed, props. An optical illusion that added another layer of intrigue to the character's depth. In the tapestry of Seinfeld, the threads of reality and fiction were interwoven, creating a mosaic of inspiration and invention. Elaine Benes, portrayed by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, is emblematic of this interplay, a character whose DNA is an intricate blend of real-life bonds and creative ingenuity. So, next time you tune into the iconic Seinfeld, remember that what you're witnessing is not just a show, but a harmonious dance of inspiration, friendship, and the alchemy of artistry that forever imprinted itself on the annals of television history. Elgin history. Elgin history. Elgin hi As we bid adieu, I invite you to stroll down the memory lane of a show that has left an indelible mark on both television history and our hearts. Seinfeld, a symphony of hilarity and everyday absurdity, transported us to a world where nothing was off limits and mundane conversations metamorphosed into comedic gold. As the curtains draw on our conversation, let us not merely reminisce, but rather engage in a delightful exercise of introspection. What moments of Seinfeld ignited the sparks of recognition within you? Was it Kramer's charismatic chaos, George's perpetual misadventures, Elaine's fierce independence, or Jerry's astute observations on the quirks of existence? Perhaps it's the absurdly relatable scenarios that echoed the absurdities of your own life, the coffee shop conversations mirroring those you've shared with your own circle of friends, or the instances when the show's brilliant humor found a comforting resonance within your soul. With your personal odyssey through the world of Seinfeld, you've likely accumulated a treasure trove of cherished memories and perspectives. I wholeheartedly encourage you to share your insights, your laughter-triggering recollections, and your reflections on how this iconic show intertwined with your own narrative. Your anecdotes become a tapestry woven from the threads of countless smiles and hearty chuckles. It's been a privilege to journey alongside you in celebrating the comedic genius of Seinfeld. Your time and interest are truly appreciated, as they've allowed us to celebrate not just a TV show, but a shared experience that has united us through laughter and camaraderie. Until we cross paths again, my friend, remember that the spirit of Seinfeld lives on in your memories and anecdotes. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this journey. Stay curious, stay entertained, and keep the laughter alive. Warmly.